Yes, guys, welcome back to the I Love Sess podcast. We've got the first female DJ of season four in the building, Mother T. How are we doing? What's going on? <laughs> blessings, blessings. Hello, um, hi. First and foremost, heard a lot of good stuff about you. Loads, loads. Right. Um, that's a good thing. <laughs> obviously, I've known about Amma. I'm going to drop it short as Amma. I've known for a minute, but obviously, to be in the thick of things, I'm still a bit late. Mm. Um, still don't really know who's who properly yet. Got you. you know, um, obviously Tabs is a close friend. So I got a lot of his recommendations when it comes to like the Amma side of things. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to say, um, and there's a few that I'll say we or he respects in it. And obviously he speaks highly of you, you know, um, that's a good thing. But when I've reached out to other people, cause sometimes when I don't know about a DJ properly and what they bring to the table, I kind of just start going through avenues. As you, you should. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, your name pops up. Other few people's names popped up, but it's not about them, it's about you today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So um, people must be appreciating what you're doing to the sound, you know, trying to say what you're bringing to the, the table. Um, how do you think about that though? Do, do you, you must hear a lot that you're proper. I, I, I get it a lot, but I think I'm still like imposter syndrome. So like I'm still feeling out like, guys, I just do this for the love of music, man. Forget about all that. Like I'm literally just, still trying to figure myself out and just enjoying the journey. Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit like, I'm almost like, guys, that's not me that you're talking yeah. about. Like, stop it. I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you seem like a, like I said, from what I've seen, this seems all natural. You it know, is, it's, very it's much so. Obviously it's for the love of music. Mm. Obviously we're not doing it for free, but it's for the love yeah, of music. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, you definitely stand out. That's a good thing, mm -hmm. you know, because I think a lot of people are the same. You know, so that's a good thing. Um, what inspired you to start DJing anyway? Because how long have you been DJing for? Two years and seven months. That's specifically, it? yeah. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> I did the calculation the other day. I was like, <laughs> you did the maths. <laughs> I was like, this isn't it? This isn't really okay. Sure, whatever. So, so would you consider yourself as a a new coming DJ, up and coming DJ still? Um, ah, my journey is a bit of a mad one though. So I don't. I, it still doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's new to me. I don't feel like I'm a a newcomer. Like a newcomer, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. at the same time, I still have to give respect to those that have been around before me and have been doing this for a long time and grinding and putting all the work. And yeah, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to have to pushed be, myself yeah. to. Yeah, do you get what I mean? Um, but I've been doing music forever, like since the age of like seven. Okay. So I actually started off as a musician. Oh, what, what did um, you play? I played the violin. Um, the flute, the piano, still okay. pans. So I've always been around music. And there was a point, I think when I was like 16, where I was like, okay, I'm a visual artist and I'm also into music. So which one do I want to do? I can't be an all round creative. I didn't think you could anyway. Yeah. So I picked visual arts and I actually went to film school okay, to study okay, okay. Sex, <laughs> special effects. Oh, special effects. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. So that's Different. what I majored in. And then oh, lockdown hit and no one was hiring in film. Okay. So I was see. like, maybe now I should jump, in jump back that. into the music yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just started like re-appreciating music and going outside and really enjoying it again. But it was only until I think it was 20, yeah, 2021 slash 2022. I think it was like October, November. I was like, I just want to, I just want to learn how to DJ. Yeah. I didn't know why I was like, I just want to learn. And then that same week, um, bless her, Jay McGregor, she heard me play and she was like, we're putting Bad. a represent. And I was like, I've been DJing for four days, guys. And it's just like, it is what it is. And the journey has just Go like on. spiraled since then. Yeah. So it's been a bit crazy, but I've loved every minute of it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And that's the thing, we're blessed. It's a blessing, do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's, you're only gonna get better. 100%. You know? It's always, you learn new things every day. This is it. You know, um, like I said, from what I've seen where you've played already in mm. two years, <laughs> not all, like not even trying to, like disrespect the thing to anybody else, but mm. where you have played within the last two years is very, very big. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. don't discredit yourself. You know, you should always put, pat yourself on the back and be like, do you know what? Like from, there's certain people who's been there for, for respectfully 10 to 15 mm. and you've been there for two years. And if I start naming the festivals and stuff you played at, and you know as well, you know as well, you know as well. I'm a very like, I'm a very self-critical person as well though. So my thing is, I've done sets where I'm like, oh, I hated that. And then I've listened, because I make sure I rec record every, every set, set as well. I listen to it back and I'm like, it wasn't even that bad. Like, what am I, what am I? I'm very self-critical. So I'm just like, I've still got a long way to go. 
And I feel like I've still got so much that, not necessarily that I need to prove, but I want to prove. I yeah. need people to understand that women can be just as technical as men and women can actually be good. Like, 100%. A lot of women get given pretty privilege you know, to be able to perform. And I'm just like, but no, no, forget all of that. I want you guys to really hear like what's going music. on here, 100%. I think even that pretty privilege thing, it's just, I feel like not, that's that's in a lot of things though. Don't mm, get it twisted. 100%. You know, like in a lot of other things, what's going on, it, 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 I don't think it sells though. I personally don't think just because you look good, it sells tickets. I don't reckon it does. You'd I don't surprised. know how it does because I've never been to a rave where I mm. thought, oh, I don't know what, she looks nice. I'm going to hear her play. No, never. Not but once. the thing is there are people that follow some of those people that, are being booked and put on lineups because of how they look and how they make them feel just by their parents or 100%. So at the end of the day, if you put them on your lineup, it's then going to sell tickets. Okay. I'll you get what I mean? Because like, oh, there's a hype around that person. Let me go have a look. Let me go see. I think that stigma is a bit shit, man. I think it's, I agree. I think it's, I think it, it and it, and that overlooks the natural talented people mm. because of looking good. Because even if, I don't want to say, oh, yeah, I've seen a lot of good-looking girls play shit, but mm. it just it is what it is. It's not trying to say yeah. no names, in it? Because I'm, I'm not here for that. But <laughs> it's like, we need to, that single needs to get brushed onto the carpet and just get talented people down, you know what I'm trying to say? Because it's easy to get overlooked in this music thing, you know? 100%. Very easy, you know? Um, I noticed that you've got to be proactive a lot. You need to be, act, like, socials you have to be need active. to be on point. And this is the thing, like I was saying to you before we started this, like, I'm actually a very shy person. I'm very... Um, as much as when I go outside, I'm very much like an extrovert. I'm very much an introvert. I really like being indoors in my own space. Like I'm a little bit shy to talk to people sometimes. So the whole idea of social media was very overwhelming for me in the beginning. Okay, cause yes, okay. You have to be in the camera. You have to be like willing to perform or whatever. And I was like, I just want to go and play music. You then have to basically have a look that is attractive so that, you know, when people capture content of you, it looks great. It is very overwhelming, I'm not gonna lie but you have to keep on top of it. And I think I'm now getting into the You're the mode of, yeah, I'm goes. like, oh yeah, easy. I'm, I know who to book and whatever, but that's also expensive. But anyway, so that's you me, From what I've seen, you seem natural though. Like it's just normal. It is normal, it's but normal, it's, like. it is performative though. Like at the end of the day, anything you do where you're in the limelight, you have to give people what they want. 100%. And respectfully, when I'm doing that, it makes me feel good enough for me to then come out of my shell. If I don't feel comfortable, you'll see it on my face. I'm someone who can't really hide my feelings. Okay, okay, okay. So as yeah. much as I'm shy, when I'm in the moment, I'm in the music, it makes me feel a type of way. And I'm like, right, I'm here now, guys. I've arrived. Like, yeah. Dutch courage, no? Yeah. Get some wine down you. <laughs> <laughs> Hennessy to be fair. Uh, yeah. I know you, uh, you all you girls are guys who love ABBA. I swear I see you sort of put Hennessy in your yeah. head and you start like, yeah. I'm thinking, is that like a ritual? Do you know what? what, what I'm actually that? starting Please. to think it is. I'm not going to lie because, oh, where did I even get it from? Please somebody tell me because... It's like that just changes the whole dynamic to the whole scene. <laughs> the guy, like, you know who I see do that? Um, my guy Ade. Ade, I was literally about to yeah, say that. Yeah, he's yeah, he's like, I think he said, like, he said, just, I don't think that. The all funniest of a sudden, thing is, he he holds on to his empty bottles of Henny. You don't want to know how many that guy has. I'm telling you, it's a, it's, there's something it's a in ritual, the air. I'm going to do my Google and that, you know. <laughs> do you know? But do you know what? I don't think I want to say about Amma, yeah? Mm. A lot of female DJs. Right. Way more than the other genres of house, right. way more of tech. Um, deep thing, and I love that. Mm. So a lot of our people, yeah, I love that, you know. And I, I ain't really heard nobody really touch on that side of things. And I've, I think that's very strong, you know. Um, unity is the key, mm -hmm. I reckon, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be as clean and cut as we want it to be. But every five, I see two DJ, two female DJs, easily, yeah. easily. Um, I wish it was like that in any other genre as well, but it's not. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna say it's a man's world, but over that way, over that side of things, it looks like the women are controlling it. I know you might think that's a shout, but I've, I've literally, when I was going through everything, I was thinking, no, female, female, female. I was thinking, okay, that's like, all right, female, female. Do you know female. what it is? Obviously, like, Ama Piano is definitely like, it's Afro electronic music. The reality is, in the EDM scene, it's always about the music and about the transitions and about the skill. It's always about that in-house music. Now, when it comes to my piano, it created a platform for women to really excel in that. Hundreds. Whereas previously it had been the guys, like women, not necessarily that women couldn't do it, but there weren't women that were putting themselves out there enough to do it. You're right, in the my piano scene, it is full of women. And it's because of 
let's see, people like TXC, DBN Gogo, um, Uncle Waffles, who have paved the way to show that you can also make this a performance as well. So a lot of women have tapped into that and gone, this is very liberating and let's do it too, yeah. respectfully. And they do it very well. It's definitely, um, like even I talked to my friend about Danky, yeah. mm. that's, that's, that's a, to me, that's not a rave, that's a show. You know, oh, yeah, that's a yeah, show. We just won a best live performance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? But like, and there's levels because um, I, def- I think the first time I went to was like in E1. Like, this is a little while ago. Mm. This is a while ago. Because so I was like, no, come. But I was thinking, obviously, like I said, I knew about Emma. But I was thinking, they're like, no, 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 trust me. Come, come, come. And I went in there and I thought, this is different. Mm-hmm. I this think I even know the one you're talking about. I thought, no. Nah. Like everyone had the... The glittery the fit. And I, I was actually standing in the corner. It was like, wait, we were stiff, but I won't be <laughs> stiff. It was just a transition to me, like, to say, yeah. like, what is, like, if you don't go, to, um, respectfully, see if you don't, haven't been to a danky, yeah, then I don't know what's happening at the minute I'm in your, telling you, over there. Because what people don't realise is when you go to all of these parties and stuff, like, a lot of people will do it for, you know, the love of the crowd and the people and the music and whatever. But Danky genuinely, like, pumps the money, like, straight it, back into the brand. 100%. That's what it create, looks like. To create, like, a further experience for for their for their customers, for the consumers, for, for all these new people they want to introduce to house music. Yeah. It is, it's incredible. It's a show. It is. It's a show. It is, and I can't. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't wait for my YouTube to to to, to, what? to my YouTube episode to drop for Danky Rooms. Okay, so you got yeah. episode dropping. When is that dropping? I don't know. I haven't been told, but okay. I've seen it, and I'm like, this okay, is wicked. Good. Wicked, isn't yeah. it? It's. I think personally, I think no. You see, like I was saying to my friend, like we were just talking about like a, a, events and stuff. Mm. Um, I think they're on top personally. <laughs> in um, obviously, it doesn't really make sense mixing it with tech and all that, but I reckon. Within the last five years, because yeah. they would have been what three years? It's four years. Three, 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 three years. Three, sorry, the last. Thank you. Started just before I started the, DJing. Yeah. So from that transition to now, I think I think they're running away with it personally. Yeah. You know, and um, like I said, I see everything. You know, I, mean, I see mm. everything. So <laughs> like I'm looking at bare other ama events mm. shows, and nothing touches them. Um, I would say, no, no. no how can I be, how can I um, rephrase it? Like from here, born hair wise, started hair wise. Mm. You know, I mean, obviously you probably, you know way more than I've done me. So <laughs> I might be chatting shit, but I'm just going on from what I see from the outside. You know what I'm trying I to say? To be fair, I feel like every collective within the um, African electronic dance scene is doing their thing, especially in Ama Piano. However, when it comes to Danky, the people that run Danky have come from so many different walks of life, seeing so many different types of events that they've kind of brought everything together. To and it just makes so working. much sense, 100%. They, they were smart to, between the four of them, to bring everything, all of their knowledge together. Yeah, it, it's something that just works so seamlessly and everybody loves it. And don't get it twisted, like, you know, nothing is ever really original, but the way they've put it together, it's like, how do you now replicate that? You can't you really. Can't, you can't. I've, I've... What's that? So what about the... Um... That was a raving. Was it alternate? Was it piano people? Was it called people piano? Piano, piano people. people. Mm. Is that is that is that based? Is that from here that's, as well? That's homegrown. Yeah. That's 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 massive as well. Because you've played for them a couple times, haven't you? I have. Yeah. So my last one that I did was for Camo and Pella. Okay. Yeah, that was in January. That was incredible. Honestly, I heard that was wicked. Oh, that was because <laughs> <laughs> that that's was an all saying. female lineup, and because of who Camo is, what all of us ended up doing without realizing that the other DJ would be doing it was basically putting together a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I had a whole group of dancers that had come, but they weren't just piano dancers. They were from the hip hop world, from okay, the dance so the hall world. Okay, so the yeah yeah, 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 like, and we did like a whole choreography for a couple of songs in my set. And yeah, it was great, I'm not gonna That's lie. some insane show movements. Show. 100%. But again, if people like Uncle Waffles hadn't done what Uncle Waffles did, there wouldn't be room for us to know that we can do that. Yeah, like 100%. you can have dancers on the stage, you can turn it into a whole 100%. performance. So yeah, like piano people's homegrown, they also 100% do their thing. They have really, really good backing. So they've been able to, from the very beginning, book some of the larger um, artists from South Africa. That's that's the benefit that they have. And that's what's very attractive for piano people. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I was thinking, you pay for that twice though, isn't it? Is it two, three? Uh, three, three, just three, 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 three or four times now, I think. Because okay. I did... Goodness me. So I did Camo, I did PC and Justin, I did Jazik. Okay, maybe it's three. Three, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? 
Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that's it. Did you, so did you do the Abifa with Danky? I, I did, that. yeah. How was that? That was wicked. That, that was, was hectic, but it was, was, it, it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So you got, you, got, you got them, so packed everything. You got everyone over there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Danky just got some the f- core. It is. And the thing is, like, knowing what's coming as well for the for the next one for September. Yeah. That's what um, S-Fire's out there now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Literally, I'm just, I'm so excited. They dropped the, even the visuals for the line-off. I was just like, this is so cold. T-shirt. When I say, like, they're doing the right things, it's just so attractive. Like, you just want to be part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's definitely a show. Um, so I always wanted to talk to you. What you produce? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get shy I, again. I'm nah, like, oh, yeah, I do that. No, but it's your journey, isn't it? You mm. know what I mean? It's, you are music. So mm. we, we, we all got... And that's the thing, one thing I'm going to say quickly. Like, we know... We all might hear you DJ, but we want to hear, like, what, what, how are you? You know, how are you doing? You know what I mean? We've all got, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But um, how's that going then? What, is, is, have you always been in producing or just got jumped I, in I on I started that? off as a producer. Oh, so you just started so, off? What, no, when, when I was, mm, I started that when I was 15, I think. Oh, so early does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I started with, like, hip hop and R&B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the transition to house music is very different, where you have to really understand, like, what the patterns are, like what the bass lines are, what instruments are being used and whatever. I was very used to organic and traditional producing on things like Cubase where- Yeah, Cubase. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Mm. Where you've got everything connected and you play them. I'm not gonna lie, in house music is completely different. Whole bunch of synthesizers, whole bunch of press this button to get this effect and having all of these plugins. Yeah. (laughs) So it's, I feel like although it's something I've done from way back, I'm having to relearn. And that's okay, because I, I enjoy knowledge anyway. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm enjoying this. So I've been, um, I've had the privilege to be plugged with like a lot of producers that want to work with even me. even anyway. Yeah, so got a few, I've got loads of songs actually, but I'm just currently in the process of playing them, see, seeing how people react. So then I know like, okay, what else do I want to create along that line that makes sense? Um, I like creating something that's signature. Like even me and when you mention my name in certain rooms, people are like, oh yeah because I have a signature way that I play. I want my music to scream the same way. So until I get to that point, I'm not releasing anything officially, but it's coming. Yeah, but what, backstroke, bro? Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know so, what's that, what do you think? so what do I play in the, I usually play backstroke. I play, I did an oops edit as well. And um, an Omi edit, all with DJ Kwamzi. Bless him like. Yeah, bless him, DJ Kwamzi. He yeah. has got uh, the mind of a, an absolute wizard, genius. Wizard. It's just but it's different. A yeah. We worked on it together, but he'll he'll have a moment where he's like, give me a minute. And you just have to leave the room, just leave the boy to- To do his thing. To hear, hear certain things. And yeah, like it was a blessing to have him in my corner. And you know what, like we still talk and we're still really, really cool. And he's gone on to do three step and stuff, which is incredible. So yeah, but there's still a lot that I have to learn, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like you got the knowledge already though. Yeah. You seem like you're well in tune. You seem like you, you, you pay attention. Oh, I definitely, definitely Pay do. Pay attention. Yeah. I think that's the key. But even I reckon the key is well being around good people. Mm. You know, a lot of it's a lot of weirdos. That part you know. and the the music industry is very interesting. Where <laughs> it it's a lot sometimes. Like I've actually just taken a break and I'm coming back, but I've been away for like two weeks. Where I'm like, I just needed a second. It can be very overwhelming. But also, you. people aren't actually always that nice. Yeah, it's, it's it's a strange one. It is definitely a strange one. I, I think if you're in one thing, I, well, you know, everyone's different. Obviously, it depends on the, the where I am in life. Yeah, um, I'm gifted. I kind of, I kind of know if it's natural from the yeah. first conversation, from the first, or even an hour in. You know, yeah. I can just. I'm an energy person. I work with energy. And you know what I mean, right? And that's exactly what I'm like. So my thing Very, is, yeah, if I'm not rubbing with your energy respectfully, I'm just gonna walk away. And I feel like I was getting to a point where the energies I was receiving weren't same. They weren't organic. Same. They weren't authentic. Same. They weren't real. So I was just like, I just need a minute. Same. Because otherwise, huh. same. You know, it, yeah. Of course, of <laughs> course. Um, that's the best thing, though. Sometimes step back, but sometimes what I realize as well, because I, I step back a, a lot. Mm. Like I said, I'm at peace in life at the minute. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, that's that's how I deal with things. I just step back and it's like, right, sweet. But sometimes when you step back, sometimes it's hard to come back. You know. And this is the thing. So it's like when I said like sometimes I can be really really hard on myself. I'm just like, oh, I'm not doing this, and I should be doing this, and I wish I was here. That's why I said I had to do the, ca- the calculations the other day. I'm like, it's only been it's two years, seven months. It's not been long at all. So uh, you just need to give yourself grace. But again, these things come with learning. And again, 
making the right kind of friends in the industry is super helpful. Like, super. I'll be honest, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for VSRE telling me, jump on the decks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and it hadn't been long, but she was like, if you don't start now, then when are you going to start? I'm like, okay, cool. She's someone who I can call anytime. And don't get it twisted, we both go through it. But to be able to call her and... And just have and just, words. Yeah, it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm back. I don't have anything to worry about. It is hard, but you just have to know who's in your corner. And yeah. It's hard to get... It's very easy to get blind, to get blinded, though. Because mm. obviously, some people, you might think, oh, shit, I used to listen to that person. Now I'm with them now. So you automatically, you're going to bypass bare stuff. Mm. You just think, shit, oh, I'm next to thingy. Mm. Like, I'm there. And you just bypass all the little paws because you're just excited. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've been there, trust me. I've just, cause I've already been doing this for three years, two and a half years okay. as well, just after lockdown myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So certain, some some people, DJ come across, I'm like, what? I used to go to all his raves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just there chilling, chilling. Yeah, man, don't I'm gonna holler at you. He's telling me oh, I'm gonna holler at you, I'm gonna holler at you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just kidding. Then I realized, no, pa. But it's fine though, isn't it? You're I've like, had that a lot as well. I mean? Where I see people, they see me in a party, they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm all like, yeah, 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 don't yeah. sell me dreams, because yeah. I'll be real, like, I'm gonna get hollered at regardless. <laughs> yeah, so exactly don't worry that. about me. Like, exactly just say that. hello and keep it exactly moving. Exactly that. But um, I'm fine with that because mm. sometimes they have to just, you know what it is as well? What I realize as well, why sometimes you shouldn't even take it personal. Sometimes they just wanna see, they wanna see you in action before mm. they holler. Which anyway. I also get. And yeah, yeah, respectfully, yeah. sometimes it's got to be like that because you've got to see that they can make the crowd turn up and see how you perform. And I hear that. So it's, 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 it's not on to Archie though. Mm. Mother T. Yeah. How are you doing this? What's the ha, ha, what, name? The name? Where's it come from? Because oh. it's different. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. different. <laughs> so this one's actually a, I actually quite like this story. So like when I, when I began, like I said, my, my journey be began quite quickly. A little bit more, like quicker than I thought it would. I, I thought I would have time to refine myself as an artist before putting myself out there. But before I knew it, I was on radio. And I remember Jay was like, so, you know, where can the people find you? And all I'm thinking is my Instagram name is really boobs and other drugs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I can't be telling people that's my name. Yeah, I was like, I can't be doing that. So I remember having a conversation with Jeremiah at Siyama and he was just like, yeah, you need to, you need, you to, need, to, you need, you need a brand basically. I was thinking, okay, well, what runs? And me and Via went through some names and whatever to try and pick. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually always the mother of the group. So let's just go okay. with that. Let's just make it sound quite cute. Add the T on the end, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you definitely would it down. You definitely yeah. would. <laughs> I was yeah. like, it works. And you know what? Like, it's just so fitting, like with how I am, how I carry myself anyway, but how I am in all of my my circles and whatever, um, how I am on the decks, like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying yeah, to teach you lots of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it is. I had cloth for raw, mama T. All right, cool, but it definitely and the M U V A. You know what I mean? You just kind of like remixed it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, well done to you. Thank you. Yeah, I did like because I was like, yeah, boobs and other drugs. It's not. Do you know? I saw that. I thought, all right, sweet. Do you know? I'm not even gonna go into that. But that, yeah, yeah. That's just bad. I have attachment issues. I've had that name on Instagram since I was since I first started to 15. I was just like, I can't change it now. Like, it doesn't make sense. I've never changed the name. So that's gonna stick there. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, personal yeah, cool. account. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course. Um, so I wanted to speak to you about the BBC One Extra experience as well. Yeah. Um, how was that? So when you got the call up for that? That was really good. That, that must was... have been changing life, not life changing, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like... it was again like I'm very lucky and honored to like have so many friends in the right places. Yeah, of course. So um, I was at a show watching Uncle Waffles and then Jeremiah was like, actually, what are you doing this Friday? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I want to get you on BBC. I was like, okay, Big. okay, sure. And it made so much sense because we had the camo show coming up and camo was going to be there as well. And I'll be honest, like we even hit it off so well. Like it was so organic. It was so, I was like, okay, this this year is my year. This is this, this is, is what it. we're doing this now. Is it. This is yeah. It. And I feel like I needed that. I needed a bit of a kick up the ass, to be honest. That's a massive kick, though. Yeah, it was a great kick. It was beautiful. Listen, I'm telling you, yeah, things like that, people would love to be in that position. That's why you got to give thanks. 100%, every and time. Ev every time, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I won't say don't get too ahead of yourself, but mm -hmm. I don't know, sometimes you've got to rate yourself and think, boy, do you know what I mean? But I think a lot of people do forget themselves respectfully, do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so, yeah, he's just for being humble and just give thanks, isn't it? Do always, I mean? always, always remain hum humble, but also give yourself grace and understand that you're not where you, you're not where you are for no reason. 100%. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm still shy, but I'm still very humble because at the end of the day, it can be taken away from you as well, just like that. 
Right. So just respect the fact that this is your journey and you are here because people love you, because people enjoy you, because you're a good person. 100%. Exactly that. I think even being a good person will get you very far. 100%. Because 100%, you know? I've seen people who I'm like, this is going to end very quickly for you. And that, like, I have no issues like minding my business and focusing on me because I'm, I'm a huge believer in karma. So when I've seen people do like, <laughs> yeah, percent. I've seen people do some dirty, dirty and you think, things. And how, how, yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to laugh and keep it stepping because at the end of the day, I know that I'm a good person. I have my moments where, you know, might yeah, get a little course, bit out of character, course, but everybody course, does, course, do you know what I mean? But I'm a generally good person and that's all that matters. I'll be real. And you have to carry yourself with, with grace in this industry because you never know who you're going to come across, who you're going to see, what, what opportunities people are going to have for you. Because somebody's always watching. Always. No matter what you do, always. socials, whatever, there's always some personal. Because sometimes I get some random messages from randoms. I'm thinking, who are you? But it just shows that someone's watching somewhere. This is it. And this is even like going on to like the next thing, like when it comes to international bookings. I'm just like, how do you guys find you get me? Hold of me? Yeah, yeah, of course. Because what were you doing that you came across and me, little fuck? old me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it just show, like I said, and them international bookings. It just shows though, it mm. shows that it's it's reaching. But one thing I do realize as well, people pass on stuff, people are sending stuff forward, forward, because I get forwarded bare stuff. Mm. So imagine, sometimes I'll be on Instagram, I could start off in like, what just people in London, yeah? I could, in an hour I'll be in like Japan or something, or I'll be in fucking Ghana, or I'll be in fucking America, or I'm in, and I think, how the fuck? Sorry for my language. Oh. How have I even got all the yeah. way down there? But it just shows. So imagine what they're doing then, if, if that's us. 100%. Like, I've seen people, like, and respectfully, a lot of DJs now are, like, focusing on edits and stuff. Now, this is something that I've been doing. Yeah, but a lot yeah, of people yeah, are focusing on edits. I'll be honest, edits are sick because it's a good way to get the crowd engaged. Like, oh, snap, who knew that that would work together sort of thing. And sometimes when I'm looking up edits or whatever, I'm coming across all these DJs where I'm like, God, I never knew these people existed. And then I'm looking at edits that they've done and I'm like, do you know what? I'm just... I, that's what leads me to then start to start DMing like so many people like, okay. hey, I'm a huge fan. Like, what are you telling me? And then they're even saying to me, yeah, I've heard of you. And I'm like, yeah. stop this because now I'm getting a little bit starstruck because I've, I've come to you, like you just scrolled up on my page. page and, yeah, yeah, but yeah, just the way people find you is actually crazy. So do you like, so how do you find your music then? What's your go-to or you've got different avenues? So many different avenues. So, um, <laughs> One of the main ones is that people will always send stuff to my email. Like, okay, yeah, of course. Ever since BBC kind of named me the queen of edits, like I just get edits in my inbox. It's actually crazy sometimes. I, oh, that's it. I don't use a lot of them because I, I go for a very particular sound, but I get loads in my inbox, which I, I like. That's I'm it. like, oh yeah, that's new it. music Fridays. I'd listen to all the, all the music on Fridays and see what I want to use for the weekend and stuff. Oh, that's it. Um, sometimes I'll be listening to a track and... I'll just be like, I want an edit of this. I can't think how to even, so I will send it to somebody as a producer that I like, and I will also say to them, I want this as an edit, what do you think? And see what they come up with. Yeah, of course. That's another way that I do it. Or I just go searching. I'll be honest, SoundCloud has been my friend. Like, yeah, I batter sound. That's, all, that's the only thing I use, you know? SoundCloud has been my friend from way back, from Same. way before any of this, Same. this journey. Same. So. Sometimes just searching, searching, seeing what you come across. And I've come across producers who are like underground in Paris that nobody knows about. And they've got the coldest. A lot edits. going on over there in Paris, isn't it? They be doing a lot. I'm not going to lie. So a lot going on over it there. just it just depends. Um, and then also sometimes if I'm bored, I'll just create stuff myself when I'm at home. I'm like, oh, yeah, this works. Yeah, That's yeah. when I've got time. I've got time and energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, so you got, you got everything. Okay. I'm not going to ask you. Have you got a five year plan? No. <laughs> what are you saying? You're just running with it? I'm just running with it. And I think the reason I'm running with it is because when it came to working in film, I had a plan. And the plan really got turned upside its head. So I just kind of, I'm, I don't know whether it's like I don't want to jinx it, but I'm just like, okay, I look at the next six months and I'm like, in the next six months, where do I want to be? Who do I want to meet? Where do I want to play? And that kind of sends me in a certain direction. Once I've reached those three goals, I look at the next six months. So that's kind of like- That's how, how you run it. Yeah, okay. I have to. Because if I plan too far ahead, it's very overwhelming for me. Like as much as everybody sees me on the decks, we're smiling and happy, blah, blah, blah. I'm an ADHD and a BPD babe. Like I'm, 
very much like I need to organize myself a certain way or else I will panic. I don't like panicking. So. <laughs> six months. Once we get there, we do the next six months. That means your, your music folder must be tidy. Tidy. My friends always say to me, like, why do you have so many folders? And I'm like, because Tidy. this is the only thing that makes sense. I've got over 8,000 songs. Everything is in a very specific folder. Yeah. It's just on point. Everything, just everything is on point. Like, if we get the opportunity, I'll even show you. Everything is in a very specific folder. Um, if I've got, as an example, if I've got drum and bass, I will have drum and bass vocals, drum and bass melody, heavy drum and bass, drum and bass edits. Oh, you have it? Everything is very specific, so I know that when I'm performing, I know how to find my stuff. Oh, so you can just oh, okay, yeah, of course. So you know, you so when your things in here, let's maneuver, blah blah blah. You'll yeah, get yeah. to everything because I don't organize anything before my sets as well. I don't, I don't pre plan it. Oh, not, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, I, well, I would have thought that's what DJs do though. No, some people plan, some people practice. I don't have decks at home, I've never had decks at home, so I'm just kind of like, if I know that I want to play a song, I'll put it at the top of my list. Um, like I'll just move it to the top of my folder, okay, but other than that my folders will tell me what direction I want to go. The crowd will tell me what direction I want to go. I don't plan anything. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's kind of, I like it that way. So you just come and you read the crowd, like, right, yeah. we'll start from that far left folder. You might go back into the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, literally, that's right, it. Cool, that's it. I always tell my friends, as long as I know what song I'm starting with, the rest is history. Like I just let the, I let, I let it run. I'll open with whatever I, I want to open with. Oh, so is that how you do it? So you don't, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Don't plan anything, but I know the song I'm going to open with. And then after that, yeah. But don't that but sometimes won't that change if no. you're like oh no no matter what so no matter, no matter what. what you're playing because what I do as well which I felt like was very important I feel like a lot of DJs need to take this into consideration especially those coming up is when you are booked for a certain event first of all look at the event you're booked for but also look at your positioning on the lineup if I know that at a danky sound I'm being put like right in the middle I know that means party star that means that you want me to start the party I'm obviously looking at who's either side of me as well but you want me to start the party. Okay, so if I'm starting the party, what song am I opening with? That's kind of like, that's my little... Yeah, that's your... Yeah, like camos, I knew that I wanted to open with the dancers, so I knew what song I was going to open with because I had to... Yeah, 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 you had to just play the one where everyone just... Yeah, yeah. and also I was opening for camo, so I was right before her, so she even said... I'm watching. So oh, so I she knew, said, yeah. yeah, yeah. She was like, I want to watch you. Oh, the, yeah, so ah. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. So that kind of set the precedence for like how how I'm going to begin. I always know what song I'm going to start with. Okay. That doesn't yeah. change. That's just your technique. That's just your own little That's thing. That's my own, yeah. I thought people just come there, pre the crowd. Oh shit, yeah, that one don't look like his own stuff. All right, let me just remix it quickly. No, you yeah. just make sure you just come with your own sound. Bow. Yeah. Then then if you have to change it during after that, then you might start. Mm, I mean, sometimes oh, it can like, it can go like either way sometimes. Like when I did um, Bezos event the other day, um, obviously Tabs was before me. Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't think he was going to be playing like housey music like that. I thought he was going to be playing more Amma. So what he finished on was quite housey. And I was like, okay. All right, cool. The tune I wanted to open with, I'm not going to open with that. I'm going to open with something else that leads me to that song. So yeah, I did, yeah, I did, I I did a little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You said you've done a little thing. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I think I opened with like Second Wind and then I went, in, which was a proper house track. Um, and then I went into 911. And then I went into Falling and My Piano Remix. Yeah. So there was a way that I was going where I wanted House to be in my set. So you still really. kept it? Yeah. For that crowd? For that yeah, crowd. Yeah, because it was that crowd there as well. Yeah, yeah. But the so. track I actually wanted to open with was the Falling and My Piano Remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. He's playing House. I'll just... Just... just yeah, yeah, just yeah, move that. it ever so slightly, <laughs> like... But yeah. No, I hear that. Um... What about the, so I saw the Switzerland um, yeah, walking that you've got. Um, yeah, yeah. What, 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 is there a lot of Amma going over in Switzerland then, yeah? There are a lot of Southern Africans in Switzerland. Didn't know that, didn't know that at all. Yeah, I found that out too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> didn't like, know um, I got a call from, um, I got a message from someone actually, and I wasn't really taking it seriously. I was like, nah, they ain't booking me, whatever. But then I got a call in relation to that message, and the call, the call was from J Music's manager. I was like, He's a, like, easy, like, what, what's, what's going on? He's like, yeah, he's a friend of mine and, you know, he wants to book you, what you, what you say and sort of thing. I was like, okay, yeah, take course. this quite seriously. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Let's go. Cool. Let's and cool. you know what? They've been so accommodating. I haven't even done the booking yet, but they are so accommodating. They're so lovely, like, talking about how they want to bring me back already and they want to show me around. And I'll be honest, like, the rest of Europe, the house music is where it's at. And yeah, so for free. They really take I'm care of it. I'm starting to realise, you yeah. know. Like, Paris was one thing that opened my eyes where... I had a driver come pick me up. 
they paid for all my food, accommodation, flights, everything. Um, took me to the venue, made sure that I was okay, fed me, watered me during the just, during the event, just, just, just taking care, and then also how you supposed in to do it? One hundred percent. I was like, life is really different on this side. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it wasn't obviously my first international booking, but it's definitely been one of my favorites. I think, I think even that it makes you just realize, wow, like this is how it could be. One hundred percent. Weekly, this is weekly. how it could, <laughs> you know what I mean. This, it could be like this because people are touring every. There enough every day, every week. This is it. So imagine just doing something you love and you're getting paid for what you do you love and you're not even stressing. This is it. <sighs> and this is why as well, when you go into those scenes, like talk to everybody, especially people that are taking care of you. Like let them really know who you are because you never know when you're going to come across them again. You never know when you're going to need them again. And that booking was for Kind of Music, which was incredible because they are some of the biggest house DJs in the world. So to do that and then for them to shout me again for round two, like oh okay, okay this is this is yeah <laughs> this was lovely this is this is great. So who are you waiting for the you you waiting for the South African booking? I mean I'm I've been asked already, but <laughs> I was asked by someone and they thought I was already in South Africa. Oh, they thought you like you was there. They were like, oh, so can we book you? And then I was just like, oh, so they thought you was like literally from there. They there, thought I was South I mean, African. Like, sorry, there, yeah, yeah. They yeah. thought I was South African. They thought I was there, and I was like, no, 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 I'm in, I'm in London. They were like. Oh, we can't afford that flight right now. So no problem. <laughs> no problem. It's time will come. Don't worry. I'll, I'll hit you up when I'm there. Like sometimes that's also how it goes. I would have I would have flew there though. I go. I know. Obviously, things cost yeah. money. And I would have went there though. I, swear <laughs> to God. I said, look, once you if you sort of my com and yeah. thingy, I would pay my own flights. I swear. I did say to them, but then I also said, you know what? Let's also plan it properly. I'll let Where? you know when I'm there, and yeah. then we, we can do go it from different. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just keep in contact with them. Oh, but you know this what I mean. It's just still there as well. Just keep connected because these are people that they, they, they reach out because they want you. They want what you bring. Okay, cool. So let me just make you know you're also in the right place. When we work, we'll work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. see? You got it figured out. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, you're, yeah. A yeah. little bit. Um, what about Amethyst? How was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> How was that one? That was a really good one. That was so much. Do you know what? It was hectic in the beginning because I was just like, Obviously, I don't have a manager, so I've just kind of been. Just everything's coming to you. Everything's coming kind to of me. So I'm negotiating it. everything yourself, and I'm just like, how am I getting there? I need to get my hair done. What's what's my outfit looking like? I'm having to like do everything myself. But then getting there and then being on the stage and just seeing the way the crowd responds. Because remember, at something like Amethyst, you've got four different places that these people could potentially be at to listen to music. You've got different tents, and you've also got a main stage. Yeah. So yeah. to have that many people in the tent and watch the tent grow with people, it's like, it's such a beautiful thing to see. I just felt liberated. Like I felt amazing. I was so vexed I didn't record that set. I know that's the one set I didn't record. The one set Sorry. I didn't record. And I was just like, why did why I do though? that? Um, I think, I don't know. I think I didn't expect it to go as well as it went. So I was just kind of like, oh, it's, it is what it is. Um, I remember like looking at the the decks in the mixer and I'll, I'll be honest, like I started on like a 900 Nexus. I started on something where you, you can barely, you can't really perform on it. Like you really have to be able to hear. Okay, okay. It's okay. not like DJing in that moment is very, it's audible, it's not visual. So I was like, oh, I don't have the decks I want. But somehow, like, I managed to do everything that I'm used to doing on, like, a 2,000 Nexus, a 1,000 MK, uh, a 3,000, all my little beat jumps and all. I was like... It was just all working. It was all working. But then by the time, like, I realised it had worked, the set was done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I think I started recording and was like, I forget it and just unplugged it. Oh, oh so what, you have to put in, like, a... Yeah, I've got a little thing on my phone. Oh, okay, so is that what you do? Uh, what you just plug it to? I don't yeah. know how, they, how do you do it. Like, how do they? So there's a um, there's an app called DJM Rec. Okay. So basically DJ, DJM Record. You basically just got to have a wire, plug your phone in, plug it into the mixer. Oh, I didn't even know that. And I always thought how I thought you put in like a I don't know what the fuck. There are loads phone. of different ways, but I was like, I want the easiest way. I don't want to be doing all of this. I need to plug it into the XLR. Yeah, and yeah. That's what I thought you got to do all of that. Nah, this one lets you just plug it into the mixer, press record, and then it does. And it comes out clear. It comes out incredible. Like I could literally show you, it's, it's perfect. Only thing I would say is, if the wire's damaged, you're pissed. And also if the mixer hasn't been updated, you're also pissed because it will just disconnect. Oh, just disconnect. That's also happened to me a couple of times where I'm like, there's a set I really want to record. 
but it just disconnects it. I'm like, okay. What about the visual side of things? You always record yourself visually? <laughs> no, never. But why? I f- don't you think? I think that's the n- new thing at the minute. I hear that. I I'm hear not that. saying you need to be like everyone else. I hear that. But at the <laughs> minute, <laughs> at the minute, I think that's a lot of visually. It's, I it's feel like you're asking great questions. I feel like you're asking me something I've asked myself, and still haven't made the moves to do. Five K mode, <laughs> stand, record, and it just faces you. And that's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's I'm it. like, yeah, I need to do Literally, it. Literally, you say, and it, and you just you got an hour set, yeah. but you could chop a thousand times. That's my philosophy. That's what I tell people. You could record yourself, and I, this is what I realize about a lot of, I would say, bigger DJ slash. He's been doing it for longer. Yeah, they chop up the same scene, the same set about yeah. a thousand times, and they'll just put it out bit by bit. You think it's a different rave, but it's just the same rave. Do you know just what? Chopped up, chopped up. I actually had to speak to Kaz from Banky about this. And he was like, just get a GoPro. I said, fair. Yeah, look, look, you just get a phone. Fair. So I'm just kind of like, okay, I also want to, I don't want to spend a lot of money on the wrong things. So I'm also just trying to do, to do my, yeah, exactly. I want to do my research and make sure that like, I'm getting a tripod that is going to last me a while. 100%. I'm getting a GoPro that is, you know. Proper, just proper things. Just proper things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The best of its, of its generation, I guess, without it having the huge price tag. So there's a lot to take into consideration because I also know that the amount of times like I've bought, I've spent money on a stylist or outfits for an event and I'm like... Yeah, what the fuck? fuck Literally, literally. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Now that I'm more comfortable being in front of the camera, knowing like what my angles are and how I want to be seen. Yeah, okay. I'm telling you, I promise you, once you... That is... That's one of the main keys. But obviously, you're still getting out there regardless, but I'm telling you, visually, the... That, I'm telling you, that's that's a no-brainer. No, I know. I, I've, I've watched my, some of my friends, like, in the studio even. And they're recording it, and I'm like, I'm actually sitting down watching your video because I'm actually enjoying it. But, like, where are my videos that I'm putting out? Exactly. So, I, yeah, I hear you. But, like I said, it's, it's literally... And the things about it, if you're not speaking to somebody who cares and who wants you to grow, mm. you won't even know nothing. So when I start speaking to the right people, they're like, mate, you could just use your phone, just put in 5K mode, mate, and stand it up. And I'm thinking, huh? Yeah, that's it. Then when I've tried it and I've like put, uploaded it, it's clear. And I thought, so after all of that, I'm thinking you need to go buy a Canon for like two grand. I'm thinking you need to go and buy a mic for like thingy. I'm thinking, mm. so everyone, most people just using their phones and just uploading it. And yeah. I thought, fuck, is that it? Free. And do you know what now I'm even thinking about? Because I was thinking, oh, but what about the quality of sound? Okay, but if I'm plugging in the something To the, the something, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to yeah, say, it's literally, you're right, that's you're right. free. But you'll never know until you speak to someone properly and they'll just... Give you a game like mate, you just get your phone. And I'm thinking, no, I'm think I was literally started looking for cannons, thinking, oh, how am I gonna thingy for hosting this and but to get your phone? Yeah. And I thought, well, so I have to save the fa- thousand, two thousand pounds. Yeah. You know, the only thing I ever bought was like a little adapter for like ten pounds. And I thought, is that it? So it's like, it's it's good being around. You need to be it's, you need to be around people who care as well, because they will definitely put you in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, one hundred percent. And from that. You just keep growing. But like I could see, and from the energy, I could tell everything's proper. Everything's, it's natural. Very you know what I mean? So. Um, I believe in when you interview someone, if you're telling the truth, it will flow. Everything flows. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's you, like, you might say you're nervous, but as you go into it and, you, and it's passion, it's just natural. That I 100% agree with. And that's you know how I mean? it is, I think, performance-wise as well. Like, as much as I'm shy and I'm always kind of nervous. I always start off nervous and then I'm like, no, nah, I'm in it now. I'm within like- Yeah, yeah you're, you're in it now, yeah. I'm, I'm inside, it's, it's fine. But I think it's just it's just a bit intimidating sometimes like- No, of course it's overwhelming, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Of course, but you know what you're doing. I just think, you know what is it? I kind of understand why people say they're kind of shy when it's just cameras, because at least mm. when there's loads <laughs> of people, you could kind of, I won't say you could hide, but because there's a loads of people, you could kind of just like, but obviously I get it, it's just like, Dum, 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 yeah, dum. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you DJ in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people, like. It doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Oh, well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, has like a de- has, you know, like, have you ever played that before and like, music's cut out because of your mistakes, anything, like any mad experiences when you've played that before? Or luckily, or not luckily, but you've just kind of just been all right all the time. Because I've been that sometimes and some people's deck just cut off, but not due to, not due, no, due to technical faults, but I'm saying due to yourself, have you ever had like a mad set before where things have just gone like mad? Do you know what? Mad? I'll be honest. I think there's, it's very rarely that things are perfect. Very, very, very rarely. 
Because if I was to go back, let's see, um, when I was at Camo. Yeah. I don't know who asked me to export my USB on that day, but. Someone just said, just do it. Just do it. But then it wasn't doing it. And it was like five minutes before my set. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry because none of the music I want is on my USB. I just had to say, fuck it. And like, dash the laptop and just try and make it work. I had three USBs and none of them had the new tracks on like that I wanted to play. I was like, I've just, I've literally just got to make it work. Um, I ended up being like five minutes late to my set because of that, which was really annoying. It is what it is. Um, Danky Rooms, I turned up and the mixer that was on my advance wasn't the mixer that. That, that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, apparently what had happened, it was they got me and the person that was playing after me mixed up. The, oh, the, the so venue what? did. So basically, they had to change it for the next. They, was... they, that mixer was there because of the next person that was coming after me. Okay, okay. I didn't know they do things like that. Yeah, yeah, because because obviously if you could use it or not, so they yeah. just kind of facilitate. And I looked, at it, I was like, I've never used this before. I don't even know what what it's what, called. What is... But it's the one for um, like laptop DJs can use it. So can USB DJs. But basically, it's got all these like little coloured pads and stuff on it. And oh, is that a mixer? It's a mixer. Ain't that like a like something like that? You see that? I can see, yeah, it looks like that. Oh, okay. It it looks like a sound desk, but it's not a sound desk. It's got like all these, anyway. So that happened and I've gone, oh my gosh, Summer, I didn't know this was gonna be here. And he was just like, can you use it? I just looked at it, I was like, I'll figure it out. And I figured it out, but I was just like, I was so thrown off. Um, so that could have gone wrong, but didn't. Um, what else has happened? Um, at Amafest, the, <laughs> the technicalities with their music was that if the music, reached a certain panel on the, well, what call it? Cut, like a, it would cut out. So I said to the guy, you need to turn it up from the sound desk so I can turn it down on yeah, the mixer. Just, but the sound, the sound desk guy wasn't there. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna have to live with the music being low. You just gotta just be low, yeah, 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 yeah. So quite often there are things that happen, but because of the frequency of it, it then schools you for the next time. So you know also what to tell people or how to react and, the best thing you can do in that situation is just not panic. It just don't panic. Like it's not the end of the world. Do you know what I mean? No one's gonna think you're a shit DJ. Mm. It's actually how you recover. And I've seen so many videos that I love as well online of DJs where they hit a wrong button or something goes wrong with a mixer or somebody bumps into them and you know something happens. And how you recover is actually what tells me that if you're proper, one hundred percent. And I've had to do it numerous times. Like I've had. I hate it, don't ever get it twisted. And please guys, don't ever do it to me because I actually get really upset. But people that are drunk and they want to know me and then they're right next to me whilst I'm DJing and they're doing up snaps and, and I'm just oh, yeah, like, you don't like, I it. can't stand it. Because my thing is you've got drink in your hand, you're doing up Snapchat and I'm just trying to- I Just let me play. Sorry, yeah, excuse me yeah, one second. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, need, to get, yeah, I just yeah. need to get over there. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a lot, but just don't panic. Just like, sorry, excuse me, just one second. They want to get to know you. you and I hear about? them, I'm like, chat to me after, man. I'm yeah, a nice person, yeah, facts, chat to me after. Facts, Do you know what facts, I mean? Like, facts. it's not a big deal, but again, it's how you deal with those situations and just don't panic, don't shout, don't. <laughs> that cut off, I keep hearing about that thing, about like, even like certain, when you go to certain studios, um, when you play music too loud, just cut, does it just fully just cut off? Just cuts off, yeah. Not even, not even dim and down or nothing, just, no, cuts, just off. cuts off. That's mad. Because what you need to remember, so ha, this is the thing. So when, before I started learning how to DJ, I was um, the event tech manager of a venue. So I was always setting stuff up. So I had to, I was the person that had to fix and that, work the sound that, desk. Yeah, 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 of course. So the thing is, you've got your internal system and your external system, your decks are your external, external system. If you peak your external system, it just makes the internal system trip. So the best thing to do is to turn up the internal system and keep your, um, your external system at a constant. Because then what happens is you don't get a, Clash yeah, of sounds get, for it yeah, to, yeah, of course, there's of course. no opportunity for it to peak. Yeah, of course. But DJs, a lot of the time, they're like, I want the music louder. And they turn it up. All of us do it. Like, I can't even sit here and be like, I'm not that guy. I do it as well. But yeah, it's, it's really, really bad. I'll be honest. It's really bad for the sound quality and all of that. Just keep everything at constant. Allowing your sound desk person to turn it up on their end. Okay. Yeah. Schooling, schooling them. <laughs> you say you're schooling them. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, so what what... What advice would you give to DJs who are coming through as well? Obviously, I know you, you're you're kind of new, but not new. Yeah. I'm not even new. <laughs> what advice would you give them from from your transition? Mm. What made you where you are today? What advice would you give them? Um, a number of things, to be honest. Damn. Um, wait your turn. 
don't be afraid to ask, but wait your turn. Some people are always like, oh, but I'm really talented. Okay, yeah, but there's like a certain, like an unspoken rule like in the industry where you can't, you just kind of have to wait your turn. Chill out. Chill out. Yeah, relax. chill out. The, for the longest time, even though I knew that I was good, I was on a lot of opening sets. I'll be real. You start somewhere though, isn't it? This is it. And this is the point. Like you have to let people give that, give it room to be heard. And I'd be on opening sets sometimes and people are like, but why are you opening? I'm like, let them see that. Let let them see that that's not where you, I'm, you I should be next time. Do you get what I mean? But you need to start somewhere. I've had too many people that, you know, will complain about something like that. And it's like, you literally just have to wait your turn. Do you know what I mean? Like it will all come in its time. Like slow and steady actually genuinely wins the race. Like don't be in a hurry to go anywhere. Um, practice, practice, practice. Whether that's going to the studio, or whatever. When you go to the studio as well, guys, it's not a performance. That's the time for you to make mistakes and like really fuck up and learn about yourself. I'm tired of going to studio sessions where, and I say this to all my friends, they all, all know this. I don't go to the studio to perform. I'm sorry, like I get paid for performance. This is not performance. Hey, listen, I see them being, I see them going having there. Sometimes like, yeah, go it's for a, a little banter. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah banner, but more yeah. time, like studio's expensive. Like I'm going to teach myself. Yeah. I'm going to learn from other people around me. Um, so that's also super important. And also like, ask those questions. If you're unsure about something or you want to be on a lineup, ask. I'll be mm -hmm. real, like, don't get twisted. A lot of the time I am approached and I have been approached, but there are certain sets where I'm like, I want to be on that. I've reached out to Super D and Pioneer and I'm like, I want to be on your lineup. When mm. you're ready, shout me. I've reached out to Teaser, shout me. Because my thing is, for me, that's a goal of mine. I appreciate those events and that's where I want to be. I'm not afraid to ask. People can see it as, oh, it's Beggy. But at the end of the day, like, if they're not reaching out to me and I know that's what I want, Bro, how else are you going to get it? it? It's just Love that simple. That. So just, Love it's, that. it's it's always, it's a continuous journey. You have to continue learning Love at the that. end of the day. So yeah, just don't be afraid, guys. Like, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have to start somewhere. It's true, it's true. You know what? Thanks for coming down. Thank you for having Wicked me. Wicked conversation. I ain't even gonna lie. Um, no, okay, I'm glad. <laughs> I think it's gone better than I thought. Um, I'm honest. I think it was a wicked conversation. And I've, like I said, I will keep saying this. I've learned something today. Good. So for me, that's a wicked interview. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming down. Thank you so much for having uh, me. No problem. <laughs>